have such incredible memories since I was five, six years old, coming to Hawaii on the regular. Beautiful memories being here with my family. Janet Jackson's journey through fame, family, and personal challenges is one that has caught the attention of the media for many decades. From her early struggles to carve out her own identity amidst the towering success of her siblings to her rise as a global icon, Janet's story is one of triumph over adversity. Women who have lived in fear, I stand with you. You are my sister. Women, our voices will be heard. We will be heard when we speak out for justice. There are many interesting and controversial aspects of her life, some of which have led to her massive fame and others that led to her downfall. Did these controversies prevent her from reaching her full potential as an artist? And did her family struggles play a role in her early downfall? Join us as we unravel the life and sad ending of Janet Jackson. Early life and family background. Born on the 16th of May in Gary, Indiana, Janet Jackson is the youngest of 10 children in the famously known Jackson family. Unlike her older brothers, she was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, while her brothers performed as the Jackson Five in Los Angeles and lived there with their father. She stayed in Indiana with her mother and other siblings until 1969. As a member of one of music's most legendary families, Janet's journey has a unique blend of great highs and profound lows. Growing up as the youngest in a household already shaped by the great success of her siblings, particularly the Jackson Five, Janet faced a lot of challenges in establishing her own identity. The Jackson family, known for being very creative, had its share of challenges. From a young age, Janet has constantly been under the steady watch of the masses due to her family's fame and attention. So much attention was on her as she was on her way to success and fame, rendering her little room for error and putting a lot of pressure on her from an early age. At the tender age of seven, Janet took the stage at the MGM Casino on the Las Vegas Strip, marking the beginning of her journey into the world of entertainment. There she starred in numerous shows like The Jacksons, Good Times, A New Kind of Family, Different Strokes, and Fame. However, this early rush into stardom left little room for a normal childhood, lacking the usual school experiences and playing with friends. Her father, Joseph Jackson, guided his children's careers with a firm hand steering them to great success but also subjecting them to public scrutiny and family hurdles. Janet's interaction with her tightly knit stardom was far from perfect. While experiencing significant wins, her respect for a private life became a deliberate journey as she navigated the complexities of public expectations and personal aspirations. The Jackson family's formidable reputation cast a heavy shadow on Janet's personal and professional development setting the stage for a narrative shaped by both accomplishment and adversity. Being someone who so much aspired for control over her own affairs and fought heavily for her independence, could growing up with overprotective parents have been the trigger for Janet to constantly seek freedom of choice? Let's find out. One of the biggest challenges for Janet, growing up in the Jackson family and with her dad, was the lack of control she had over her own life and her attempt to take control of her own life led her to the very first scandal she faced, her marriage with her childhood friend, James DeBarge. Janet's Scandalous Early Marriage In 1984, after Janet's graduation from San Fernando Valley Professional School, she took to her heels with her childhood friend and musician, James DeBarge, in a marriage that lasted only one year. The secret marriage was strongly motivated by her attempt to take control of her life from her father, Joe Jackson, who was fully involved in the career of all his children, trying to steer them into success. In the two-part documentary called Janet Jackson, the 55-year-old pop superstar revealed that she just wanted to stand on her feet, and at the time, she didn't think there was any other way she could get her own life unless she got married. They often snuck out to see each other, although it was very hard since Janet was heavily protected by her mother and father. She recalled in the documentary that she only got blessings from her sister Latoya while keeping the entire affair secret from the rest of her family. Likewise, DeBarge got blessings from his uncle, and the couple was wedded in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
While it seemed like a good idea at the time, Janet later learned that she had made a terrible choice as she now had to deal with her husband's massive drug problems. On the night of their wedding, James left 18-year-old Janet alone in their hotel room and didn't return for three hours. DeBarge's drug abuse would contribute to more problems for the newlyweds. After Jackson had finally had enough, it culminated with them getting an annulment in 1985. In the documentary, Janet Jackson revealed that there were times when she would go in search of her husband at night as early as 8 or 4 in the morning. It was clear that Janet cared about James, but his drug habits stopped them from being a proper couple. While she knew he needed some help, she was sure she wasn't the help he needed and hence ended the relationship in 1985. Aside from this early mistake, Janet Jackson enjoyed some successes early on in her life with the release of some music albums. Janet Jackson's Career and Performances From a young age, Janet found herself in the global spotlight, following in the magnetic footsteps of her siblings. Performing at the MGM Casino on the Las Vegas Strip at the age of seven, she was immersed into a world that demanded excellence and left little to no room for errors. However, her interaction with the life of a star was far from perfection, marked by significant highs but filled with many challenges. Despite her fame from her work in films and television, her respect for a private life clashed with the public's endless interest in the Jackson family. Her transition to a solo career became a pivotal moment in Janet's early trajectory, leading her to release a total of 11 albums to date, with the earliest being Janet Jackson Dream and Control. Although the first two didn't enjoy much success, Control was a hit, selling 8 million copies and winning two American Music Awards and five top 10 singles in the US. The album was co-produced with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, with the album as a bold declaration of independence, both personally and artistically. It signaled Janet's coming of age and her determination to break free from the controlling influence of her family, particularly her father. Hits like Nasty, What Have You Done For Me Lately and the titular track Control resonated with themes of self-assertion and strength, mirroring Janet's own quest for self-dependence. Her next album, Rhythm Nation 1814, did justice to the previous one and solidified her spot in the industry. In this album, she continued her trend of socially conscious music, promoting the messages of unity. The record was another smash hit and sold over 12 million copies worldwide, featuring songs like Black Cat, Escapade, and more. Jackson nabbed her first Grammy in 1990 for Best Music Video, long form for Rhythm Nation 1814. That same year, she received three other nominations. The album also made Janet Jackson the first artist with seven top five hits from one album, winning three American Music Awards and producing her first tour in 1990. In 1991, she signed with Virgin Records for $32 million, the largest recording contract of the time. Next, in 1993, came the album Janet, featuring famed songs If That's The Way Love Goes and Any Time, Any Place. Like its predecessors, the record sold and charted very well, continuing the star's nearly unparalleled success in the industry. The album was also noteworthy as Jackson put her sexuality on the forefront and became known as a sex symbol around the world. That same year, Jackson returned to acting with a leading role in Poetic Justice, opposite Tupac Shakur, Regina King, and Maya Angelou. Jackson co-wrote the movie's theme song, Again, and received an Oscar nomination for Best Music. Despite the massive pressure to love up to her family's reputation, especially with the Jackson 5 and Michael Jackson being very popular in their own careers, Janet Jackson has managed to carve out her own name in the music industry and become a sensation in her own rights. Sadly, when things were high and glamorous, Jackson's career took a drastic turn in 2004 when she performed at the Super Bowl 38 halftime show alongside Justin Timberlake. The Super Bowl 38 incident and its aftermath. The Super Bowl 38 incident, often referred to as the wardrobe malfunction or nipplegate, stands as one of the most controversial moments in live television history. During the halftime show performance featuring Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake, an unexpected wardrobe malfunction occurred when Timberlake tore away a part of Jackson's costume. 
revealing her breast on national television. A show that was meant to come down as an entertaining performance, which it was, turned out to be more. Jackson's performance with Justin Timberlake surely blew the minds of the listeners. Yet, there is one moment that clearly stood out and in truth is talked about to this very day. As the act came to its climax, Justin Timberlake approached Janet Jackson and proceeded to pull off a part of her costume, which led to her right breast being briefly exposed to a TV audience of more than 140 million viewers. As one can imagine, most were shocked, but there were also those who wondered whether they had just witnessed a moment that was planned rather than accidental. Even though during an interview with Oprah, Jackson clearly stated that the incident was not intentional and hence resulted in her covering her breast, many still have doubts about the truth of the malfunction and the statement from her tailor doesn't help tune down the rumors. The Ecuadorian native Garzon disclosed that Jackson did in fact request alterations to her outfit, however. He declined to go into details about the changes, stating that he had signed an agreement with her. This indeed casts more shadow on the subject and doesn't help in any way in determining if it was a mistake or actually staged. The fallout from this event had significant repercussions for Janet Jackson's career and public image. Immediately following the incident, Jackson faced intense scrutiny and backlash from the media, the public, and regulatory bodies. Criticism poured in, leading to a swift and severe response from the entertainment industry. One of the most glaring aspects of the aftermath was the disparate treatment between Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake, with Janet taking a lot of the hit from the incident and Justin taking minimal damage in his career, going on to win numerous awards while Jackson was backlashed severally on numerous channels. This discrepancy highlighted gender bias in how the incident was perceived and dealt with by the media and the industry. The impact on her career was profound. She was blacklisted by major broadcasting networks, disinvited from the Grammy Awards that year, and saw her music pulled from radio playlists. Subsequent albums and singles received less promotion and achieved lower sales and chart positions than her previous work. Despite the setback, Janet Jackson showed strength and dedication to her art. She issued apologies and sought to move past the incident, focusing on her music and acting career for many years, making the struggle to regain her previous standing in the music industry a slow and difficult process. Moreover, the incident brought attention to broader issues of objectification and sexualization of women in the entertainment industry. Jackson's body was objectified and her agency undermined, while Timberlake faced relatively little backlash. This reflects a larger pattern where women are often reduced, while men escape accountability for their actions. The incident serves as a clear example of the gender disparities in the entertainment industry. It highlights the challenges faced by female artists in managing their public image and the consequences of media scrutiny. The death of Michael Jackson. The passing of Michael Jackson in 2009 sent shockwaves throughout the world leaving an indelible mark on millions of fans worldwide, including his family, particularly Janet Jackson. Michael's death was not just the loss of an iconic musician, but also the departure of a beloved brother, sparking a profound sense of grief that Janet, like many others, grappled with deeply. As a member of the renowned Jackson family, Janet found herself navigating the complex terrain of mourning under the constant scrutiny of the media. Every aspect of her grieving process, from her expressions of sorrow to her attempts to find solace, became subject to intense public observation, making it even more difficult for her to cope with the situation and resulting in more sorrow. Like every other member of the Jackson family, Janet leaned close to the rest of the family to give herself solace in these difficult and trying times. Aside from her family, Janet turned to her creative pursuits as a means of navigating her grief. Channeling her emotions into her music and performances, she found relief in honoring her brother's memory through her artistry. Notably, her heartfelt tribute to Michael at the 2009 MTV Music Video Awards stands as a poignant reminder of her deep love for him and her commitment to preserving his legacy through her creative expression. Now, more than a decade later, Janet is talking about finally being able to move on. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey for CBS Sunday Morning, 
Janet spoke candidly about how she overcame her grief and learned to cope without her beloved brother by her side. She also revealed that it took years of healing before she was able to accept his passing as part of life and start living again. In the interview, Janet opened up about the difficult process of coming to terms with losing a loved one. With humor and vulnerability, she shared stories from her own experience that demonstrate how profoundly grief can affect our lives and how we eventually find strength through resilience and resiliency once we're ready to take control of our future. As time passes, Janet continues to find constructive ways of coping with her brother's passing. She has come to understand that grief is a process and there will be days when the pain still lingers, but she also knows how to shift her focus so as not to dwell on it too much. Music has been a great source of healing for Janet. Creating songs about her experience has allowed her an outlet for expressing her emotions in a healthy manner. Prayer has also had a profound impact on helping Janet move forward from this tragedy, as she expressed in the interview. Furthermore, Janet's openness about her feelings and experiences served to humanize her grief, fostering connections with others who had experienced similar losses. By sharing her journey of coping with the loss of Michael, Janet not only found a means of personal healing, but also offered comfort and solidarity to those who looked up to her as a source of inspiration. Source her marriages and relationships. Janet Jackson's journey through love and relationships is a multifaceted exploration of personal growth, challenges, and struggles. Throughout her life, Janet has experienced significant relationships, each leaving a notable mark on her personal and professional life, with the most notable one being her marriage with James DeBarge in 1984, when she was 18 years old, which only lasted one year. Two years after the end of her marriage to James DeBarge, Jackson met and started dating songwriter Renee Elizondo Jr. in 1987. The pair dated for four years before they married secretly in 1991. Throughout their relationship, Elizondo Jr. helped Jackson with her music, and the two co-wrote 37 songs together, including That's the Way Love Goes and Lonely. By the late 90s, however, their marriage had crumbled. They divorced in 2000, and Elizondo Jr. sued Jackson for $25 million in assets, claiming he signed their prenuptial agreement under duress. According to Forbes, they settled his lawsuit in 2003 for $10 million. In 2012, Janet's relationship with Qatari businessman Wissam Almana became public knowledge leading to their marriage and the birth of their son, Isa, in 2017. Jackson married the billionaire who was in charge of 55 companies covering fashion, engineering, real estate, and media in 2012. She was introduced to Almana in 2006, and they started dating in 2010. They became engaged and got married in 2012 when the billionaire was 37 years old, while Jackson was 46 years old. They had a secret marriage away from the spotlight because it had a business agreement behind it. The agreement had two clauses. One was that the singer would receive $100 million if their marriage lasted at least five years. The second clause was that she would receive another $100 million if she gave birth to a boy for the billionaire. Jackson became pregnant in 2016 and had a son, Isa, in 2017, when she was 50 years old. The singer decided to file for divorce on the basis of cultural differences from her billionaire husband in 2017, shortly after she gave birth to her son. Almana also kept his own part of the bargain by giving Jackson the sum of $200 million after they parted ways. Janet's marriages and relationships, though finally exposed to the public eye, have started in secrecy before becoming a thing of the public. This only comes to show the emphasis on her love for privacy in her personal life. Now, while her other marriages were mere chapters in her life, her marriage with Almana was one that really left a never-ending impact on her life with the child she had with him. Balancing motherhood with her career. On January 3, 2017, Janet Jackson embarked on a chapter of her life when she welcomed her son Isa at the age of 50 with her then-husband Wissam Almana. Three months after Isa was born, 
Jackson and Almana split after five years of marriage. Members of the Jackson family celebrated the news, including the new mom's siblings, Latoya and Jermaine Jackson, who shared congratulatory messages on social media. Her father, Joe Jackson, also celebrated the birth of his grandchild, both on social media and his website. Jackson shared the first photo of her son when he was 14 weeks old, just a few days after she and Almana split. The photo featured the infant yawning as Jackson pressed a kiss against his forehead. This joyous occasion marked a significant shift in priorities as she navigated the delicate balance between motherhood and her illustrious music career. Jackson quickly adapted to motherhood, telling the Sunday Times in June 2019 that she is in a great space and has a beautiful son. For Janet, embracing motherhood while maintaining her status as an international music icon posed a unique set of challenges. Juggling the demands of nurturing a growing child with the rigorous demands of touring, recording, and public appearances required meticulous planning and unwavering dedication. Despite the complexities, Janet approached this balancing act with grace and determination. She openly discussed the joys and difficulties of motherhood in interviews, talking about how becoming a mom has impacted her life, including her music career. For Essence Magazine's July-August 2022 issue, she spoke about her plans to release new music, but noted that motherhood is her new top priority. She emphasizes that there will be music at some point because she loves it and it's her job, but she doesn't know when, and her number one job is being a mama. Since his birth, Jackson has kept Isa largely out of the public eye, seldom sharing photos of him on social media. She has, however, shared a few sweet anecdotes about her son over the year, still maintaining her very much loved privacy. Furthermore, Janet's experiences as a mother added depth and richness to her artistry. It provided her with new perspectives and emotions to channel into her music, allowing her to connect with audiences on a deeper level. Her ability to balance motherhood and a music career comes to show her strength and determination, serving as a massive inspiration for many other female artists. Janet's legacy in music and cultural impact, Janet Jackson's impact on the music industry and popular culture is undeniable, spanning decades and influencing multiple generations. Throughout her notable career, she has left an indelible mark not only through her chart-topping hits, but also through her activism groundbreaking music videos, and role as a trailblazer for African-American women in entertainment. Since the early 1980s, Janet Jackson has been a force in the music scene, releasing albums that pushed boundaries and sparked important conversations. Ever since the beginning of her career, she has built a musical legacy that artists dream of, winning five Grammy Awards, 100 million albums sold, listing as number one in the Billboard Hot, 110 times and earning a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. As a member of the ever-talented Jackson family and little sister to the king of pop himself, Michael Jackson, it may not be so surprising that Janet has carved a trailblazing path of her own. But her musical success story wasn't immediate. Not only was she hesitant to pursue a music career after establishing herself as an acclaimed actress in the late 70s and early 80s, but her first two albums lacked Jackson's creative input and were met with disappointing sales. Once Jackson started calling the shots herself, though, she was on the fast track to rivaling pop's biggest names. Her 1986 album, Control, wasn't just her coming-of-age story. It was proof that she was a superstar in her own right. Nearly four decades later, Jackson has released 10 albums seven of which topped the all-genre Billboard 200 chart. One of Janet's most significant contributions to the music industry is her pioneering work in music videos. Her videos were innovative and cinematic and often served as vehicles for social commentary. Songs like Rhythm Nation, with its iconic choreography and message of unity, and Scream, a collaboration with her brother Michael Jackson, set new standards for music video production and storytelling. Instead of taking the safe route and capitalizing off the success of Control, Jackson set out to make a socially conscious record for the follow-up, despite her label's pushback against the idea. 
According to Jimmy Jam, Jackson was particularly disturbed by 1989's Stockton Playground murders, a racially motivated mass shooting at an elementary school that claimed the lives of five children. Taking notes from Marvin Gaye, Bob Dylan, Tracy Chapman, Joni Mitchell, and U2, Jackson released Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814 in late 1989. The album opens with a now iconic spoken pledge that portrays strong messages with powerful meaning, conveying equality and the need to put an end to racial biases and push for a world rid of color boundaries. What follows is a sequence of three hard-hitting, danceable tracks that preach racial harmony while shedding light on important issues like homelessness, poverty, teen pregnancy, crime, and substance abuse, rhythm nation, state of the world, and the knowledge. On the chilling outro of living in a world they didn't make, children's screams and a snippet of a news broadcast covering the Stockton playground murders are heard throughout. Jackson's powerful messages resonated in a major way with Rhythm Nation 1814 selling 12 million copies worldwide, the second highest of Jackson's career, and amassed a long string of number one and top five hits, including Love Will Never Do Without You, Come Back to Me, Escapade, and Black Cat. Rhythm Nation 1814 was also the first album to boast number one hits in three different calendar years, and it's the only album to garner seven top five singles. Its accompanying tour transformed Jackson into a fashion icon, as hordes of fans emulated her all-black military-inspired attire. With two million concertgoers, the Rhythm Nation World Tour 1990 is the most successful debut concert tour, a record Jackson still holds today. Beyond her musical achievements, Janet Jackson's activism and philanthropy have also left a lasting impact. She has been a vocal advocate for various social causes, including LGBTQ plus rights, AIDS awareness, and racial equality. Her charitable efforts and involvement in humanitarian work have earned her respect and admiration from fans worldwide. Throughout her career, the pop icon has used her platform to draw attention to the issues of injustice that she cares most about, from equality to HIV AIDS awareness. In 2017, Jackson used her performances and stage moments to highlight current social justice issues, including sexual violence and police brutality. In May 2018, she became the first black woman to win the Billboard Music Icon Award, and she used the occasion to advocate for change, saying in her speech, it's a moment when, at long last, women have made it clear that we will no longer be controlled, manipulated, or abused. During her State of the World tour, Jackson highlighted issues of abuse and injustice through music, dance, and visuals on stage. During the tour, she performed her 1997 song, What About, for the first time in 18 years, featuring a choreography that depicts sexual abuse in a domestic relationship. This was at a time when the Hash Me Too movement against sexual abuse was taking off, and thousands of women were coming forward with stories of their own. During the concert as well, she fought against racial discrimination and police brutality flashing the names of dozens of black victims of police brutality across the Jumbotron, followed by a video montage featuring news sound bites discussing police brutality, white nationalism, and racial discrimination. Janet's influence extends beyond the music industry and into popular culture. She has been a fashion icon, setting trends with her signature style and influencing countless artists and designers. Her impact on dance and choreography is also significant, with her intricate routines inspiring generations of dancers. Moreover, Janet Jackson's resilience in the face of personal and professional challenges serves as an inspiration to many. Despite facing setbacks such as the Super Bowl 38 incident, where she was unfairly vilified, Janet remained steadfast in her dedication to her art and continued to release music and tour, showcasing her strength and determination. In conclusion, Janet Jackson's legacy in music and cultural impact is vast. Through her music, activism, and groundbreaking work in music videos, she has cemented her place as an icon in the entertainment industry. Her influence will continue to be felt for years to come, inspiring future generations of artists and activists alike. Thanks for watching. Check out another interesting video by clicking on the link appearing on your screen right now. See you on the other side.